Good day everyone, and welcome to the channel. It's London Onion here with a Back for Blood weapons review, and in this review we're going to be looking at a more ambiguous weapon of the Assault Rifle class, the Ranch Rifle Assault Rifle. Now although the stats and specs of the weapon speak for themselves, I will be giving my evaluation on the weapon's capabilities in combat. This will involve tactics that suit the weapon's strengths, my conclusive opinion, and an overall score. Now, evaluation will take place on four main fronts. Ammunition economy, crowd control, mutation deterrence, and pressure combat. Before we get started, it is important to note that a weapon's shortcomings can be supplemented with one's card selection, but evaluation will mainly be geared toward the weapon's base attributes. Additionally, one's character choice can make a weapon somewhat more forgiving, Meanwhile, difficulty selection can accentuate or soften the downsides. So starting off with the Ranch Rifle's ammunition economy, which is essentially how long a weapon can practically last throughout a given level, the Ranch Rifle is a relatively high damage semi-automatic assault rifle. Now just those two attributes alone already put the weapon in an advantageous position. Semi-automatic firing patterns naturally put a damper on ammo expenditure and force one to take a more conservative approach when firing. Additionally, high damage minimizes the amount of shots per enemy, but even with this in mind, the ranch rifle, although semi-automatic, can fire reasonably quickly and has a low recoil, despite its description. This doesn't take away from its economy, but it only adds to its efficiency, but that will be for a different discussion. To kill a Ridden with the Ranch Rifle without any attachments, damage buffs, or corruption cards requires a single shot. The maximum damage units from the Ranch Rifle is 22 units and is most effective at 12 meters. Anywhere beyond, and the damage will recede to a minimum of 15.9. Now, this still puts the weapon outside of the danger zone, but not far off. Applying maximum damage to mutations while staying outside of the danger zone will naturally be difficult. Pierce damage, however, is worth noting since it does 16.5 units of damage after the first target, making firing into crowds or filed enemies an appropriate tactic. With 15 rounds of high damage, applying maximum fire is worthwhile and is easily controllable. At the same time though, usually when one has a rather fast firing weapon, it's a lot easier to fall into the habit of spraying and praying or firing when unnecessary which will only give way to user error. Usually, the use of maximum fire is for the purposes of crowd control, which will be our next discussion. Depending on one's corruption cards and main events in a given stage, crowd control will be more or less an important constituent in one's survival. Higher difficulties will likely create a greater need for effective crowd control. The ranch rifle shot for shot is the highest damage assault rifle, but also has the lowest magazine capacity. As we had just previously discussed, the weapon has a good amount of pierce damage, but this is only good for filed formation ridden. But regardless, on normal ridden, the ranch rifle only requires a single round. Ferocious ridden, however, require two. The reload speed of the weapon is approximately three seconds before it is able to fire again, which puts it in the median range. Now with crowd control, it helps to have greater mobility, reload speed, and damage. Two out of three is doable, anything less, and it becomes a stressful circumstance. The ranch rifle has decent mobility, so firing while on the move, which can be common in Back for Blood, is not outside of the weapon's purview. The reload speed is no spectacle, but it sits in the average range, allowing a decent flow of firing intervals. And as we already discussed, the damage is the highest amongst the other weapons in its class. However, at close range, it is easy for a wielder to become overwhelmed, since this is a semi-automatic weapon of precision. Out of all the assault rifles, it is the one designed for the highest patience. It's meant to deal with one ridden at a time. If anything, crowd control begins at mid-range, which will naturally come with a damage reduction, but at least one will be able to maintain their space as needed. It's an assault rifle, yes, but is best used as a marksman's rifle. While adopting more of a run-and-gun-like style, it is best that one maintains a slower pace than usual to maximize shot-to-hit ratio. On the plus side, its hip-fire accuracy is rather high, but this is not to be abused since the weapon only has 15 rounds. 
Factoring in user error, the likelihood of low elimination rate increases significantly when the weapon is spammed during hipfire. Sometimes, the need for crowd control is due to a lack of effective pressure combat and mutation deterrence, which will be our next discussion. Pressure combat, as I coined the term, refers to how efficiently a weapon can eliminate targets in multiple areas, or how well a weapon can complement one's ability to engage and eliminate multiple scattered targets at varying ranges. Now, after discussing the ranch rifle's effective range, damage, and control, Pressure combat is a rather easy task for the weapon, since it has the capability of one shot one kill against regular ridden. At the same time, common ridden are not always so common. With the ferocious corruption card for example, the one shot one kill reliability goes in the toilet, which only doubles the stress on the weapon and cuts its kill potential in half. However, ignoring corruption cards, the ranch rifle is best for maintaining pressure at mid-range. Any closer, and pressure turns into crowd control, which is not what the weapon is built for, but this does not mean it is incapable. The reliable hipfire accuracy can stave off limited written, until space can be created. At mid-range, with a high shot-to-kill ratio, 15 rounds should suffice. Player skill and mutations are the only factors left. As for mutation deterrence, I would argue that it is probably one of the more important aspects of surviving in Back for Blood, and I would say there are three main strategies weapons can fall into in addressing them. There is kiting, fighting, or a discriminant mix of the two. Kiting involves tactically retreating from an enemy to put oneself and other teammates in an advantageous position to eliminate them and also render their attacks less or completely ineffective. Fighting, in this circumstance, moreover, is geared toward holding one's ground while applying heavy fire and eliminating a given target before they can do much damage, if any at all. For the ranch rifle, I would say that kiting will be the main strategy when facing off with most mutations. The main reason behind this is that the ranch rifle has limited ability to reliably stumble mutations. Hawkers, spitters, and stalkers can be easily stunned with this weapon. All other mutations, especially if they have any corruptions, rarely stumble from the ranch rifle. The main strength of this weapon is that it can lay down heavy fire quickly, but this only matters if mutations are at a far range. Otherwise, one will likely need enough space to kite their enemies instead of holding their ground. Most times, a wielder will lose that battle, but then again, despite its designation as an assault rifle, it is a weapon of precision and is best not abused for close-range encounters with tough enemies. Now, I must say, the ranch rifle is easily one of my favorite weapons, and that is probably because it feels like a sniper, but handles like a top-notch assault rifle. Looking at its stats, the weapon is average to above average in every way. Higher than average damage, high range, close to maximum accuracy, which is good for hip fire, average handling, and slightly above average mobility. There is very little to complain about with this weapon. If anything, it's the uncontrollable slash base attributes that can be considered detriments. It has a slight recoil, but I would still say it's on the low side, despite the description. I find the iron sights difficult to work with, and it only has 15 rounds, but each of these are changeable with attachments, plus I would also call them nitpicks. Moving on to the scoring, the weapon's ammo economy is in the ideal range. Ammo waste is mainly up to user error, which will likely be due to frivolous use of the fire rate. Otherwise, shot penetration is good, and recoil is non-troublesome, so I give it a 4 out of 5. Crowd control isn't bad, but it is limited with this weapon. Mid-range is the sweet range, close range is doable, far range is also doable, but is almost abusive to the weapon to make it a regular tactic with close range. Otherwise, reload speed is okay, shot penetration helps, and the mobility is non-cumbersome. So I give it a 3 out of 5. Pressure combat and mutation deterrence is an area of satisfactory performance. Pressure combat is not a problem, with no enemy toughening corruption cards, otherwise the weapon has a greater chance of struggling. As for mutations, provided that one is able to keep their distance, they should be alright but the only mutation this weapon can consistently stand up to are the Hawkers, Spitters, and Stalkers. 
Everything else is a struggle for the weapon to stumble consistently. This becomes worse with corruption cards, so I give it a 6 out of 10. Overall, I bring this weapon to a 13 out of 20. But that concludes the review. Thank you guys for joining me on this one, and I will see you in the next review, where we will be doing something a little bit different. We'll be having our first critical comparison between the M1A sniper rifle and its doppelganger, the ranch rifle assault rifle. It's been London Onion, and I will see you guys next time.